Bill Holmes apology on video. <laughs> From the Craft TV studios in beautiful North Hollywood, California, comes the new game show that's sweeping the nation, North Hollywood Cubes, with special guest stars, Tom Keltaviano, Natasha Detmer, Cameron Crowe, Lil Dana Powers, Mary Weiss, Steve Rudnick, Fred Applegate, Monty Markham, and Maurice LaMarche in the center queue. All on North Hollywood Cubes. <laughs> One of these stars is sitting in the mystery queue, and the contestant that picks it first could win a prize that just happens to be sitting on a shelf somewhere here at the Crap TV Studios. And here's the master of North Hollywood Cubes, Mr. Bill Holmes. Hey! Hey! It seems like things are working. <laughs> are things working, Corey? Things are working. Holy mackerel, things are working tonight. Thanks, Bill. Hello, everyone, and welcome to North Hollywood Cubes. Hello, stars. Hello, mm -hmm. stars. Hi, Bill. Bill. Oh, it's so good hey, to have yo. you all here. Listen, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I know we had some problems earlier, but uh, it's good to have everyone back tonight on our fourth episode of North Hollywood Cubes. Now, let's not forget that tonight's show is live, so anything can happen, and it usually does, as you've <laughs> got, gotten from the last couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, we had some streaming issues on our last couple of shows, and our crack staff has been working tirelessly for weeks and weeks, testing and trying new things to make everything come together tonight. Now, hopefully tonight is going to be the night of perfection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Corey, is it working? Nobody's complaining yet? Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Looks like the streaming's working tonight. Okay, so listen, before we begin, I'm going to plug a whole bunch of shit here, okay? Uh, we wanted to let you know that we're launching our new website, okay? www.craptvonline. Now, there you can find all our, no, thank you. There you can find all our social media accounts as well as chat while you're watching the show and do all the things that you do. Uh, you can, now listen, you can choose any platform that you like to watch the show or just watch it on the site itself, www.craptvonline. Online. Okay, there it is right there. Uh, it would be, listen, if you would like to support all the crap that we do here at Crap TV, check out our newly launched uh, Patreon page. At Patreon, you'll have access to a secret behind the scenes studio camera. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you can watch and interact directly with us before and during the show. So. So I don't know I don't know why anybody would want to see how the sausage is made, but if you want to go to the <laughs> Patreon, okay? That's uh, www.craptv.online. Listen, listen, we're plugging this more than we're plugging our Carcera merch. Hey, Carcera merch, there it is, right there. What a segue. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of Carcera, I don't know if people know out there. We did a little podcast. It's an audio drama series called uh, Carcera. We, uh, just last week, we, we were the winners of Best Podcast at the Holly Shorts Film Festival, everybody. Okay. Hey. And as of, as of yesterday, I believe, we have 60,000 downloads as of this week. And uh, we're, our goal is to have 100,000 by Christmas. So please tell your friends to subscribe to Carcerum. Go to wherever you get your podcast. And, uh, and, and for God's sakes, just download the goddamn thing so we can start making money on this thing, okay? There we go. All right. Let's get right to it and welcome our first contestant. He's from somewhere here in the United States. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to Mr. Greg 
Sarah, Greg, <laughs> Sarah, and his mom, Hello. Kay. Kay's visiting. Kay's here visiting. Kay, where are you visiting from? Oh, wait, wait. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. Kay, where are you visiting from? I'm here. Uh, I live in Maryland. Maryland. Oh, what a wonderful uh, place. I've never been there. I don't care. It's okay, great. so, uh, so Greg, tell us a little about yourself. You're kind of a, a genius, aren't you? I think that's overstating things a little bit there, Bill. Um, <laughs> we're honored to be here on Craft TV tonight. Um, I, uh, I run a startup here in Los Angeles, and uh, something about myself is that sure. me and my mom, we both uh, studied math in college. And so she is continually a mathematician, and I am now, you know, I'm the black sheep of the family, and I'm the CEO of an early stage startup. Okay. And as I understand, <laughs> and as I understand, you're looking for investors, aren't you, Greg? I am, yes. I'm happy okay. to announce here tonight on Crap TV that we yep. are beginning our, uh, our seed round. Luckily for you, Greg, billionaires watch this watch this little game show. That's why I'm here. That's yeah. why I'm here. Bill. I figured. Okay, well, you might win about seven dollars and fifty cents tonight. So hang in there, kid. Okay, let's go to our our next contestant over at the uh, at the kisses window here. Uh, some from somewhere else in the country. We have Tony Moreland. Moreland. Tony, am I saying that right? You are correct, yes, Tony Tell Moore. us a little bit about yourself, Tony. Um, I live up in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and mm -hmm. I work in tech, uh, helping developers, designers, podcasters all succeed. Well, there you go. There you go. Maybe you could get some seed money for, for, the, kids, <laughs> yes. for, the, for the kids' new startup here. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome, contestants. It's great to have you here. What do you say we start the game? You want to start the game? Uh -huh. Okay, let's oh, start yeah. the game. Hmm. Now, the object of the players is to get three cubes in a row, across, up or down, or diagonally. Now, it's up to them to figure out whether the stars are giving a correct answer or making one up. That's how they earn the cube with either a kiss or a hug. <laughs> Man. Man, if this is streaming, this is great. Okay, all right. <laughs> Each completed game is worth $2.50. Oh, there's some, there's some startup money for you, Greg. Okay. <laughs> now, the player that wins the most cash at the end of three rounds will win the grand prize of the evening, a genuine Carcerum merchandise t-shirt. Carcerum, it's all about the merchandise. Tell us about that sweet Carcerum merchandise, Bill. The Carcerum branded merchandise t-shirt is just one of many <laughs> Carcerum branded merchandise items. The only official merchandise of Carcerum. The award fantasy podcast series that's taking the nation by storm select from a wide array of t-shirts hoodies coffee cups and much much more that's car serum branded merchandise car serum fantasy podcast series subscribe today okay all right there we go car serum uh, merch there we go now contestants you will also be playing for a mystery cube Ooh, a mystery cube okay now if they happen to pick the mystery cube during the game they will hear this sound. There it is. They'll hear that sound. And they can win another fabulous prize. Bill, tell them what they can win. Bill, if our contestant picks the mystery cube, they'll also be playing for a mugshot's voiceover Dr. Blah 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 coffee mug. This mug not only holds coffee, but it holds all kinds of liquids. You can drink any of those liquids, including coffee, from the voiceover Dr. Blah 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 coffee mug. Hold it in your hand or set it on a table in between sips. You'll always enjoy a hot cup of joe with your voiceover Dr. Blah 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 coffee mug. Oh, boy, you want to win that coffee mug. Now, listen, everybody. Unfortunately, technology forbids us from showing our home audience the mystery cube, so it will remain a mystery until one of our contestants picks the mystery cube. And Shane and Corey are in there. They're the ones who picked the mystery cube. Now, the contestant that wins the mystery cube round must come to the studio and pick it up at their convenience as we cannot afford the postage, okay? So if you win that, you gotta, you gotta come in from San Francisco, Tony, and pick up your fucking coffee cup, okay? All right. Okay, contestants. What do you say? You wanna get started? You wanna get started? Here we go. Uh, hugs, 
Hugs, who's the hugs? That's Greg. Greg, you're the hugs. All right, so uh, Hugs won the coin flip, so they get to start the game. Greg and Kay, pick a cube. Who do you want to start with? All right. Wait. You, oh, you want to start the middle? Yeah. I think, I think the middle is strategic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, we pick you, Maurice. Okay, great. Okay, this is this is a physicist playing this game. He's gonna he's gonna analyze it and he's gonna figure out what the hell's going on here. All right, Mo. <laughs> Mo, he picked you. Here's your first here's your first question, Mo. How you doing, Mo? Maurice Amarsa, ladies and gentlemen. He's Pinky in the Brain and Futurama and a million other cartoons out there. Thanks for thanks for coming tonight and giving us your time for that. Hi, right, Mo. It, it, this is a personality traits question, okay? I have a is personality. A person, okay, I have several. It, is a person who sits with one leg over the arm of a chair likely to be cooperative or uncooperative? At what? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a little bit of both. I like it that way. Um, <laughs> so I've heard. So I've heard. Yeah, well, mouse. In, in in all seriousness, uh, okay. you know, my wife is going for her master's mm -hmm. in psychology, and uh, and and I have often because everything's on Zoom now. I've overheard uh, quite a bit, uh, and and I picked up a few things. And this body language thing is actually something she was studying, and uh, I believe it means uh, uncooperative. Uncooperative. Okay, yes. Greg. He says they're going to be uncooperative. Do you agree or disagree with Mr. Maurice LaMarche? So, so my mom's whispering in my ear. Okay. That she thinks that it means cooperative. She Sorry, thinks, Maurice. She thinks Maurice so, is lying to us. So she thinks Maurice is lying. Well, unfortunately for you, stop listening to your mom because uncooperative is the correct answer. So you don't win that. The kiss wins that center cube. <laughs> and uh, we are going to move. Mom, hey, Kay, hey, Kay, shut the hell up, Kay. Let the kid, I know, I'm I'm Let the kid play the game. Come on. Everyone, bye. Oh, we're Tony. Next time. Tony, we're coming over to you, okay? We're coming over to you. Who would you like to choose? You've, you've got that center cube. Who, who would you like to choose? Let's go with uh, Steve in that lower left cube. Steve Rudnick, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Rudnick. My old friend you? from Chicago, uh, he, he's a, an author, a screenplay writer of the, uh, of the Santa Claus and Space Jam, Kicking and Screaming, and hundreds of other things out there. Steve, welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks for how, having how are you me, like, Bill. How are you liking your first time here at the, at the North Hollywood Cubes? Well, uh, it, it's, it's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Have we have we have we started yet? We have yeah, started. We started. <laughs> yeah. All right, keep an eye, oh. keep an eye on the baseball score, Steve. Okay. No, I'm, I'm watching. Okay. Okay, Steve, we got a true and false question here. The false. popular the popular fabric known as polyester was invented in 1954 by two sister pharmacists in Kansas named Polly and Esther Putnam. Is that true or false? Polly Esther came from Polly and Esther Putnam? Yes. <laughs> that's what we're saying here. In 1954, yeah, uh, and they lived in Kansas. Uh, no, Polly is a, is a, is a, is a prefix. You is know, it? Polly. I believe so. Po polyamorous, you have many loves. Polygamy, <laughs> you have many, many bigamies. <laughs> so are you saying that's true or false, Steve? I'm saying poly, poly Esther at the very basic would mean having many Esters. <laughs> so I say no, it wasn't named after the uh, the sisters. No. So you're saying it's false. Oh, yeah, yes, Tony? that is true. That is Tony's... true. I'm saying it's false. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that didn't confuse me at all. Uh, Tony, he's saying it's false. Uh, what do you say, I'm... Tony? Do you agree yeah. or disagree? I would love to disagree with him because that was a crazy response, but I'm actually going to agree with him. You're saying it is false. You are correct. Yes. It is false. We just made that shit up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Are you so you don't want me to help you, Tony? You've, you've got the X. Oh, did Kay? Kay, were you, were you asking if Tony needed help? 
Yeah. I think he might. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of have. So far, people are doing pretty good without Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Los Angeles, Kay. Okay, here. I gotta have a little. I got a little portrait later. <laughs> All right. So, Greg, we're going back to you. You gotta, gotta play a little strategy here. Who do you want to go with? Uh, I think I think we're gonna have to go with Cameron. Mr. Cameron Crowe, ladies and gentlemen. Big time writer, director, Oscar winner, <laughs> back to writer, Mr. Cameron Crowe. All right, Cameron, here we go. Bill. Sean Penn, have you heard of Sean Penn? I have. Okay, he's an actor. Okay, Sean Penn famously starred, oh, he starred in your film, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Did he? Right? Okay. Yeah. What, what high school did Sean Penn actually attend? Well, let me cast my memory back to <laughs> the Letterman's jacket that he wore. No. Once. No. That clearly belonged to Charlie Sheen, not him. Really? Uh, <laughs> yes. Let me think. I'm going to I love it when Cam just drops all the names. It's just great when he drops all the names. <laughs> just dropping them, baby. Just dropping them. <laughs> So I'm going to send this out to Greg and Kay, and I'm going to say that it was Santa Monica High. Samo High would be the Sean Penn High School. Santa Monica High. He says he went to Santa Monica High School. Uh, Greg and Kay, do you agree? Well, wait a minute. Let's just go with Greg. Let's go with yeah, Greg. I'm out of this. I'm <laughs> out of this. He's on his own. He's a big boy agree now. Agree or disagree? Cameron Crowe, big time, big time director and writer. Cameron Crowe says Santa Monica High. What do you say? I want the I want the polyester question. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I like the polyester question. <laughs> um, You're on your own uh, now. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say agree. You agree? Then you are correct. You no! are correct. <laughs> <laughs> it is Santa Monica High School, so you were successful in getting the block. All right. My little boy so now we go over to Tony. Tony, what do you say? Tony, uh, who do you, who do you want to go with now? Which cube? Let's go with Little Dana Powers. Little Dana Powers. Little Dana Powers, ladies and gentlemen. Dana, welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome. You. Now, Dana. Dana, it's come to my attention uh, that you are uh, you're about to you're going to have a baby next year, right? Uh, sure am. Hopefully are next year and, and no sooner. Have a baby? <laughs> so here's your question, Dana. Can babies yawn in the womb? <laughs> they can, and you know what's interesting on top of that is that. It's it's still contagious. Like when you're sitting in a room of, with people and you look at someone and they yawn and you yawn, there's I didn't something physiological that happens and it actually causes you to yawn as well. That is weird. I mean, would you have to be seeing an ultrasound in order for that to happen? Or? No, you feel the air kind of fill <laughs> really? and then it comes out. Yeah. So occasionally you spontaneously yawn because your baby is yawning. Yes. Okay, so... So can babies yawn in the womb, true or false? She says true. Greg, is that true? Wait, it goes back to me? I thought it was Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Who I mean, I would love to take this to? one. Yeah, right. yeah Shane, that's mine. <laughs> Shane put Greg up there, and I got confused. Okay. <laughs> true or false? She says true. Well, I would think that she would know since she is a, a mother to be, but yeah. I'm actually going to disagree with her. I'm going to say that it is false. You're going to say false. You are incorrect. Uh, we have it as true according to babies.com. I yeah. don't know where we got that from, but, but it's true. Okay, so. Now, whether so you, the contagious part suck. is true. <laughs> that's, that's something. That Science is out on that. that. Yeah, that's what okay, threw so, me off. So you do not get a kiss there. We get a hug there, okay? So now we go back to who? We go back to Greg, the hugs. All right, Greg, who do you go to? Which cube? Um, I think we're gonna go with Natasha. Natasha Detmer, Natasha Detmer. I gotta tell you guys, this is the most competitive game we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Natasha. How you doing, Natasha? I I'm here. Natasha. And sober, which is all to the good. 
<laughs> it's all good. Well, we'll we'll take care of that after tacos tonight. Okay. Excellent. All right, Natasha. Another true or false question for you, Natasha. Yes. Uh, who who's this? Greg. This is Greg, right? Okay. Listen up, Greg. The phrase the phrase my flashlight is on is considered obscene in Scotland. <laughs> What? Natasha, <laughs> my, my yeah. phrase, my flashlight, is, oh, oh, my flashlight's on. Yes, yeah, you know, if you're standing insane. close enough, Obscene. you wee wicked child, I'd have smacked you upside the head by now. <laughs> you know, what, Natasha, here's what I've learned from asking you this question. Neither of us do a good Scottish accent. <laughs> No, no, I really, I really needed it to be much more Barry Fitzgerald. I, I can do the thorough. That's Laura, Irish. No. That's Irish. Yeah, I know. That's, I know. Yeah, okay. I know. I know. So I'm, Natasha, yeah, the phrase yeah. "my flashlight is on" is considered uh, obscene in Scotland. Is that true or false? Well, with the way you said it was obscene, so I'm going to have to see say yes. Uh, You're going to say it's true. Outrageously obscene. It's true. Greg. Greg, you may want to consult your mother on this one. Is it obscene in Scotland to say my flashlight is on? I can't discuss this with my son. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what do you say? Do you agree or disagree with her? I say she disagree. Said, You're disagreeing. You're saying it's false. I'm saying it's false. You are correct, sir. You are correct. <laughs> it is false. Again, we just made some of that shit up. Okay. So you get the kiss there. So now we go back to uh Tommy. Oh, get the hug. Oh, Tommy. Oh. Ooh. What's going We're we're okay. We're okay. Sounds okay, good. we're good. All right, Tony, we go to you. Yes. Wait, wait a minute. Do we get the hug or the kiss? Oh, we got a hug there. I'm sorry. Tony, you gotta go do some strategy here. Who do you go with? Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with Tom for the block. Tom Keltabiano, big time writer for Everybody Loves Raymond, big time photographer. Uh, big time, uh, and you have your own show, right? A Mr. Clown show, right, Tom? Right? Oh, uh, well, Clown. it's an educational series, but yeah, I'll call it my own show. Okay, why I'm not? Gonna... You, you may as well. Yeah, you're yeah. writing the damn thing. All right, yeah. here we go. So, so you work with puppets, Tom? Okay. True. So, true. So we have a we have a question here, uh, young Tony. Uh, you uh, wait, who's doing this one? <laughs> Tony. Young okay, Tony. Thanks. Well, I looked up and I saw both people. I'm like, ah, shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Tony, what famous puppeteer graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Science in home economics? What famous puppeteer graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Science in home economics? I should know this. Why is that? As a person in the field of puppetry. Yes. Uh, it's between Edgar Bergen and Kukla, Fran, and Ollie, and possibly Jim Henson. So what do you think? I'm going to say Jim Henson. Jim Henson. Okay, Tony, he says, he says Jim Henson got a Bachelor's of Science degree in home economics. Is he, is, do you agree or disagree? I, I'm, I'm putting my faith in Tom. Tom, I'm saying yes, you are correct. And you are correct, Tony. That is true. Uh, that is true. Apparently, Jim Henson got a degree in home economics. He always had a tidy house there on Sesame Street. All right, so we got a young uh, young Greg. Uh, who do you want to go with here, young Greg? Um, we've got to go with Monty. Monty. Monty Markham. Oh, and Monty Markham is also our uh, our mystery cube. Oh, Monty. Oh, Monty. There's a lot at stake here. Young Greg could win a coffee cup that he has to come oh, yeah. pick up. Okay, okay, I'm ready. All right, Monty. Yeah. Monty Markham, star of screen and television and, and stage. I mean, this guy, this guy's a legend, everybody. You all know who Monty is. Okay, Monty, I got a question for you. Okay. You appeared twice on the iconic TV show, The Love Boat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what year... Did the Titanic sink? What year did the Titanic sink? Oh, uh, yeah, piece of cake. I was, we did a dive near the Titanic. Uh, wait a minute, yes. wait, wait, you did a dive? What? Yeah. 
No, I, we did a dive. It was a, we were shooting a documentary and uh, hmm. well, I didn't go very deep. I just watched them go down and I watched them come back up. Uh, <laughs> it had to be, uh, uh, yeah, I'm positive. It's uh, winter, it was winter of uh, uh, 19, uh, yeah, 1914. 1914. Yep. Okay, Greg. He said, winter of 1914, the Titanic, the, I'm saying Titanic, Titanic, <laughs> the Titanic sunk you in the suck. winter of 1914. I mean, the water was cold. There were icebergs. 1914 was the beginning of World War One, wasn't it? So uh, that means me hanging, that, uh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think that it was at the same time, and my mom's not being any help. I'm giving up. To us. <laughs> So what do you say? Do you agree or disagree on 1914? I, I, I have a feeling that it's wrong, but I think that I'm going to have to disagree. You disagree? You are correct. It was April 15th, 1912. Yeah. 1912. Yeah. Okay. There well you done. go. Yeah. So uh, what happens? Who gets that one? Okay, so you successfully blocked. So um, now what happens here? What do we got? One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Three. So whoever, uh, if if we don't get diagonal and across and all that stuff, uh, whoever gets five square uh, cubes is going to be the winner. Okay. So uh, Tony, who do you go with on this one? I, I, Mary, I need you. You got to help Mary me out Weiss. with this one. Mary got Weiss. It. He's going for the win on Mary Weiss. Mary Weiss, star of television, voiceovers, uh, 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 stage. Uh, she's all over the place. Mary, here you go. You got a true and false question. Ooh, the original, nice. sh the original champagne glass, was modeled after Marie Antoinette's bosom. Is that true or false? Wow. I can't help but think that if they'd used my bosom, it would have to have been like you know beer steins, those globes <laughs> really? oh that goodness. hold like. Yeah. Is that too much information? Nah, not no. really. No, no. That's why we're here. Every picture I see of Marie Antoinette, it seems like, you know, but you know what? They push those bosoms up. So I'm, I'm actually going to assume she was perhaps uh, a bit more diminutive so that her bosom was uh, <laughs> petite in that way. So let's say true. I like it. You're going to say true. So the original champagne glass was modeled after Marie Antoinette's bosom. She says true. Do you agree or disagree, Tony? You know, I said I was going to put my faith in Mary, so I'm going to go with yes. That is true. That is true. It was modeled after Marie Antoinette's <laughs> bosom. So you get the, the kiss right there, and you were very successful with the block. I'm sorry. I thought it was a win, but it's actually a block. I uh, really got to not drink when I do this show. <laughs> All right, Greg. Greg. Uh, I, I, I would have gotten two, that three, one four. wrong. One, two, three, four. This is for the win, I think, correct? It is for the win. And let's so you go, go with, with Fred. Fred Applegate or not? Let's do it. <laughs> Fred, be Fred. Fred, back, no, Fred. Fred. Oh, there you are. Okay. 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 Fred, this is for the win. Now, if if you get this correct, Greg, you're gonna win the game. If you don't get it correct, if it's incorrect, uh, Tony has to. You don't just earn it. You got to win it yourself. Okay. So, Fred, here we go. What is Fred? You're a real smart guy. Okay. I know you as a real smart guy, and young Greg here is a real smart guy. What is the longest monosyllabic, I'm sorry, monosyllabic English word? Do you know? Uh, yes. Do you? <laughs> yes. It's okay. the word scrunched. Scrunched? S-C-R-A-U-N-C-H-E-D. Can you use that in a sentence? I scrunched. <laughs> there you go. All right, young Greg. Young Greg, where are you? Where are you, Greg? There you are. There you are. He says, he says the word scrunched is the longest monosyllabic English word. And so, agree or disagree? Can I ask? Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure, you can ask. I, I really don't know the answers, but go ahead and ask. So by English word, do you mean that it's in the Oxford English Dictionary? Or oh, for do you mean sake. that it's somewhere else? For Christ's sake. Well, <laughs> I, just I don't know. It. I don't know. We went I on believe, Google. We went on Google and we found these damn things. 
I believe the standard on this show is the 1936 Scrabble Dictionary. <laughs> I don't know anything, but it sounds like another thing I can't discuss with my son. <laughs> you may want to take it up with Fred. I don't know. Uh, oh, all right, guys. So uh, he says scrunch. Do you agree or disagree? I disagree. You disagree? You are correct, sir. Yeah. You get the you get? you get the you get the hug and you win the game. Uh, the uh, longest monosyllabic English word is squirreled. Squirreled. He squirreled away his nuts. So very similar to what Fred was talking about anyway. <laughs> so I think you win the game. Does he win the game? Shane, yes. I've lost track. Hey, there we go. Freddy, you win the game. It's just the first round. You won the first round. <laughs> so you get you get two dollars and fifty cents, and uh, and now we go to what? We go to this commercial break. Holy crap! There's more than one round. Hold on a second. <laughs> Take it easy, Steve. You're gonna be here for a what? little while. <laughs> Hold my dinner. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that! Oh, look, Greg. You got to be excited. You got money in front of you. All right, Shane, Shane, are we going to see a commercial? Here's a commercial. We came here for the friends. And we got to know the friends of our friends. And then our old friends from middle school, our mom, our boss, joined of course, to Greetings, citizens of the world. This is a message from Anonymous. You are shitposting and trolling the world on social media. You may think you are the smartest person in the room, but now you have met your match. We are anonymous. We are legion. Expect us. Like bastards go be faster! Those guys are gaining on us! Do something this way! Yay! We got him! Let's see who these skeleton men really <laughs> okay. All right. They're trying to be current. <laughs> See, it was is that AC or DC? <laughs> All right, let's go to round two of the show. Shane, let's clear the board. Clear the board. We're starting from scratch. All right, so Greg, you won the first round, right? Greg won the first round. I better write this down. Greg, Greg won the first <laughs> round. <laughs> and uh, so that means, Tony, you get to, you get to choose uh, who to go with first this time. Who do you want to go with? Let's uh, let's go with Monty in the lower right corner. Monty Markham, ladies and gentlemen, legendary screenwriter, uh, actor. Eh, I've been drinking. All right, Monty, you ready? Ready. <laughs> Monty, in literature, who was Edmund Dantes? Uh... Oh. Edmund Dante. Not Dante. <laughs> the Count. The literature. The Count of Monte Cristo. The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Tony, he says the Count of Monte Cristo. Do you agree or disagree? Only because there was the long pause, I'm going to I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. <laughs> you would be wrong. <laughs> you would be wrong, Tony. Think about it, Tony. The Count of Monte Cristo. Come on, Tony. We're being stupid on this show here. Come on. All right, so you don't earn that. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies. <laughs> no, no. You gave him the right answer, Monty. You're the man. Okay, so Hugs gets that one. So let's go on over to Greg. Greg, who do you go with on this one? All right, we're gonna we're gonna redeem ourselves and go with Maurice again. Maurice Lamarche! Heavy. The center cube. Mo. Hey, Mo. Can pigs sweat? 
uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fair question. Can Ed, Ed do, can pigs sweat? Uh, Ed says yes, but they choose not to. <laughs> Actually, um, pigs, can I just say, can pigs sweat, Mo? Uh, yeah, I, I'll answer that in a second, but I, I have to take take exception to the the answer to the last round question, the longest monosyllabic word in the English language. I yeah. think I think William Shatner would would take exception to the answer of squirrel, and he would say that the longest monosyllabic uh, word in the English language is. Go! <laughs> That said, I'm sorry. I, I, I think you were had so to do that we, because we almost didn't hear that. Uh, please don't tell me how to do it. It sickens me. Uh, okay, so so Mo, do pigs sweat? Pigs cannot sweat, and they that is why sweat. they lie in the mud. It is to cool off. Pigs actually cannot sweat. All right, Greg. He says pigs do not sweat. My mom agrees with you, so I'm going to say agree. That is correct. Pigs do not oh. sweat. That's Did why I they lay in the that? mud to cool off. You are correct. So you get that uh, cube. And uh, right? is he the kiss or is he the? I'm the hug. He's the hug. You're the hug. Okay, there we go. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. So let's go over to Tony. Tony, what do you want to do to block here? Well, you know, Maybe you don't want to block. Maybe you want to get the hell out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> Let's go with Tom for the block. I still got a little bit Tom. of free time tonight. All right, Tom. Tom Keltabiano, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Mr. Clown. Mr. Clown. Uh, Tom. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Shane, be ready. Shane, be ready for this. You ready? Here it comes, Shane. Okay, Tom. Who took the picture Earthrise, the famous photo of Earth rising over the moon? This picture right here. Who took that picture, Tom? Do you know? You're a famous photographer. Yes. Uh, that was Alice Cramden. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thomas. Yes. Uh, uh, the, yes, uh, that's... Uh, I, I, I'm also into, uh, uh, besides photography, the astronaut program. So uh, a lot of people think that it was Apollo 11, but it was Apollo 8, and it was not Frank Borman or Jim Lovell. It was Bill Anders. It was Bill Anders. He says, uh, who am I talking to, Tony? Tony, he says it was Bill Anders. Do you agree or disagree? Tom sounds like he knows, knows what he's talking about, so I'm going to say yes, I agree. You are correct. It was William Anders. Correct. So you earn that cube. All right. So you successfully blocked. Uh, Greg, young Greg and Kay, who do you go with next? Uh, I think we're going to go with Steve, Bill. Steve Rudnick. Steve Rudnick. Big time screenwriter, Hi. Steve Rudnick. Big time comedian. All right. Here we go, Steve. Okay. You ready for this, Steve? Are you ready? I am ready. Clement Clark Moore, an Episcopal minister, was most famous for writing what, Steve? What did he write? Clement Clark he Moore. Wrote, he wrote the famous <laughs> thing. No, no, I know this thing. I know that. I mean, on the light, it's super hot. Okay. Can, am I, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. He wrote, he wrote the, what, what was his name? Clement <laughs> Clement Clark Moore. It's good, good, good that I have to repeat the name because you seem to know what you're talking about here. Well, it turns out that he's one of my favorite. Uh, I'm gonna say. I also didn't. Poets. Yes, and uh, so I'm gonna say he wrote a poem. one, but. Wait a minute. I'm hearing. I'm hearing Tom I'm hearing... talk. Tom, shut the hell up for a second. Okay. <laughs> Steve, say that again, please. Say that again. Uh, I didn't hear it. Yes. Uh, what was the question, Bill? Okay, here we go. Now, Clement just, Clark Moore, an Episcopal thing, minister, was most famous for writing what? Mark, okay, he was a, uh, he wrote a poem. Yes. Do I have to tell you which one? Sure. 
I don't know. <laughs> um, it's got to be one of two, because I only know two poems that would fit this. It's got to be either Casey at the Bat or the, the Christmas one, uh, Night Before Christmas. And okay. I would, so, and I don't know which one, but because you did the Monty thing, I'm going to say it's the Night Before Christmas, because I wrote a, a movie. Boy, my edible just kicked in. I got to go. <laughs> 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 the night before he wrote the he wrote the night before Christmas. What was his name? What was the guy's name? Clement Clark Moore. He wrote the night before Christmas. Okay, is what he wrote. Uh, all right. So Tony is it Tony? I'm very confused right now. Tony, no, he says twas the night before Christmas. <laughs> it's actually Greg. It's Greg. It's not me. It's Greg. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I can Greg. answer for Greg. Greg, he we, says, uh, Greg, despite, he says, it was the night before Christmas. Despite that whole charade, we're going to agree. You're going to agree. Well, good thing you did, because he's correct. He's correct. <laughs> thank, God, thank God the edibles kicked in, because you got, you got your, your cube there, and you were successful in a block. Now, can I just do one follow-up question on that Yeah, one? sure. Go ahead, Steve. What was the guy's name again? Huh? <laughs> Clement, Clement Clark, wait a minute, Clark I gotta find Moore. It. Clement yeah, Clark night before, Moore. Night before Christmas, he wrote. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're just you're just clarifying. Just okay. Sort of make sure. <laughs> All right. All right, what do we got there, Shane? Show me, show me the board. Okay, you were successful in the block there. So now, Tony, who do you want to go to? Well, I, I, I can't exactly block. But let me let me do one of the blocks and let's go with Cameron Crow, please. Oh, you got you only got one block there. Oh, I see. Okay, all right, there we go. Okay, go. Cameron Crow. Cameron Crow, big time writer, Cameron Crow, big time director. Still reeling over the Steve Rudnick tour de force. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just shivering in the shadow of what just happened. <laughs> Oh my God! Thing of think beauty. Be, thing of you'd beauty. You think you'd be a little more articulate, right? No, but no. Okay. Yeah. Cameron, what famous queen's last words were? Pardon me, sir. I meant not to do it. Pardon me, sir. I meant not to do it. Very famous queen's. Pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. I think is, it was said uh, somewhere in Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, give it to me again, Bill. What famous queen's last words were, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. That would be Queen Victoria the first, I believe, because there were several Queen Victorias. Okay. Is it Tony? Tony, right? Tony, Tony. he says Queen Victoria the first. You Cameron, I'm putting this? my trust in you. I'm saying yes, you are correct. You're agreeing with him. You are incorrect. It was again Marie Antoinette. She stepped on the executioner's <laughs> foot. She stepped on his foot. So Sorry, again, Tony. um uh, <laughs> Greg, you cannot earn that. Uh, I, I mean you can't automatically win. You have to earn that. Who do you want to go to for the win here, uh, Greg? Uh, hmm. Let's let's go with Mary Weiss for the win. What? No, 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 no. no. I mean, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean for the? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Let's, uh, wait, wait. Can we wait. go back to Cameron? I, no, wait a minute. I forgot who the hell. Yeah. <laughs> who's it? Who? Oh, you're the hug. Yeah, you. Yeah, you I'm, can go back to Cam for the win. Yeah, let's go do it. To, uh, Fred for the win. Well, I thought anybody. Could, I I don't know how this game works. He That's scared fun. me. I was asleep. I was. <laughs> I got you, Mary. I smacked him in your face. All right, Greg, who do you want to go with? Uh, let's go with Cam for the win. Camera Crow. Ladies and gentlemen, Camera Crow, big time writer, director, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Cam. Yeah. What legendary band was initially called the New Yardbirds? Well, to any Led Zeppelin fan, this 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 is just a piece of cake. 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I'm feeling like Greg is a Led Zeppelin fan. All right. And so I'm going to say Led Zeppelin. He's, he's pretty young, Cam. He's pretty young. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Greg, he says Led Zeppelin, what legendary band was initially called the New Yardbirds? Do you agree or disagree? He says Led Zeppelin. Uh, I, unfortunately, am not a Led Zeppelin fan. Okay. And so I'm probably, I'm going to say disagree. You disagree. You realize that Cameron Crowe used to write for Rolling Stone magazine back in the day. Uh, okay. Uh, it was Led Zeppelin, according uh, to Rolling Stone magazine. So uh, you do not earn that. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Tony, he he couldn't have gone to K for that? Did, don't we have a Zeppelin fan in K or, or not even K? K can give us that K? band of my husband knew it. He texted, but I did not look at my phone. Oh, okay. Oh you gotta goodness. look at the phone. Okay, you gotta look at the you phone. Look at the if phone. you're gonna cheat, cheat. Okay. I know. I, know. I should have cheated, but I didn't. All right, Tony. What? Boy, you gotta, you gotta break here, Tony. What do you want to wow, do? that. Yeah, that, that that made a real quick turn there. I've been going with Natasha. Natasha Let's do this for Detmer. the win. Natasha Detmer for the win. Oh, in the Tony, 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 here. Tony. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Natasha, let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me, wait, let me find a good one for this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Natasha, do yeah. women really have more headaches than men? Do they really have more headaches than men, women? No. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it really, no, what, 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 you have not been horizontal and heard some females say, um, <laughs> oh my, hey, ever? Really? I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been horizontal for, I've been married 39 years, I haven't been horizontal for a while, okay? <laughs> All right, so, so you're saying what? What are you saying? Do, so do women really have more headaches than men? Oh, why not? Yeah, sure. She's saying yes. Yes. No, of course they do. Of course, okay. they're, they're sensitive souls, and men are pigs. And yes, women have more headaches <laughs> because they go. But pigs don't sweat. sweat. Men don't. <laughs> we understand. All right. So, uh, Tony, she says yes, women do have more headaches than men. Do you agree or disagree? I cannot disagree with that. I have to agree with Natasha. You are Thanks. correct, Tony. You are correct, and you get the win. Uh. Oh my gosh, the game is tied up here. Look at that. How exciting. <laughs> hey, give, give him the money, Shane. Give him, oh, there it is. All right, so, so the third round is going to determine who our winner is, and we'll get right to that right after God, this. God, there's a third round? There's a third <laughs> round? <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. I know you're watching yes, baseball. Up, yes. <laughs> Let's go, round three. <laughs> but, anyway, but first, Steve, this commercial break. This commercial break. From an old friend. What did you use that for? Charge my computer. Oh, yeah, my phone is. Yeah. Natasha, yeah. we can hear. Hi. You. you got a second? Okay. You remember how, when we were younger, we used to um, run around and hang out on the internet and, and pick a song and a background for your page? Freak out. About whose top eight list we were on? And then one day, I was like, "Oh, hey, guess what? Big news! I'm leaving." Uh, this is my brother. Money. He's your new best friend. And then I got on a bus and I left. And we didn't see each other for like a really long time. Can we just talk about that? Great. Because I, I realized that, that that was kind of abrupt. Um, I just kind of got up and went to college. And look at all you have done and all you have accomplished in all that time. And it just, it's just so amazing. Right? I guess I just wanted to say that after all these years, I never forgot you. Ever. And I'm super glad we're still friends. Thanks for listening. You look great, by the way. Whatever it is you're doing, it's working. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. I'll attribute to Facebook tonight. <laughs> All right, Shane, wipe out, wipe out all those X's and O's or kisses and hugs or whatever the hell we call them on this show. 
This is it. This is it. This is round three, Steve. Oh, you oh, gotta be on. excited. Ernie Banks, let's pay five. Let's, let's play five. Come on. Steve, you gotta be excited. Your first time on the show, and we're just keeping you here as long as we can. Uh, all right, this is for the this is for all the money. Uh, we're gonna have a big wiener at the end of this round, okay? So who won the last round? Tony, you won the last round. So Greg and Kay. Okay, give your son good advice this time around, okay? You get to go first. Who do you want to go first with, uh, Greg? We're going to keep it consistent and go with Maurice. Maurice in the center square. Maurice LaMarche. Maurice. Mo. Yes. Uh, let's Will. see. Where am I going to go with this one? Let's go to this one. Never Sock a Baby is an actual title of a Popeye cartoon. True or false? <laughs> Never Sock a Baby is an actual title of a Popeye cartoon. True or false? Oh, gosh. Oh, let me go into my Popeye history. <laughs> we was ahead of the curve on coming out against child abuse. Um, never Sock a Baby. That is horrible. I, I can't. I, you know what? Even in the 1930s, I don't believe that needed to be said. So you're saying so, that's false. Unless it was a cartoon about, you know, it looked like Sweet Pea was wearing a very large sock. You never saw his feet, just this, you know, oh, trailer. Oh, sock a baby. I don't know. I, I would say, though, that I think that's a, that's an, it's, it, okay. it's a false one. I, He's I, saying false. that's false. Never false. sock a baby is an actual title of a Popeye cartoon, true or false. He says false, uh, young Greg. My mom and I are, are going to disagree and say it's true. It's true. It is true. A Max Flesher cartoon released through Paramount in 1939. Never sock a baby. Wow. <laughs> As my mother would say, different times, Billy. Different times. <laughs> okay. All right. Tony, who are you going to go with here? Let's go with uh, Steve in the lower left there. Steve Rudnick. Steve. Uh -oh. Look at Hello. Steve. We're making it worth your while. You stuck around all this time. I'm ready to go. <laughs> We're making it worth your while. Steve. Yes, sir. Some, you know what? Let, let's go over to this one. The character Foghorn Leghorn. Now, you wrote Space Jam, so you know something yes, about the Warner Brothers characters. Yes, the do. character Foghorn Leghorn was inspired by the U.S. Senator from South Carolina, Beauregard Claghorn. True or false? A real senator, you're saying? His name was Beauregard well, the, the character Foghorn Leghorn was inspired by the U.S. Senator from South Carolina, Beauregard Claghorn. Oh, that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, but come on, you know, because that it's sounds like a that sounds like, you know, that, that sounds like another character that Mel Blank would have uh, voiced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like a made-up character. I'm going to say that, uh, no, that's not true. So you're saying that's that false? Uh, well, I, I, I like to, I like, I'm a positive guy, Bill. I look at it as not true. You want to call it false, call it whatever you want, all right? I've been living through hell, Bill. It's not true, okay? The glass is half full. Is that what you're saying, Steve? It's false. Well, the, my, my, my is half full, so let's, let's say false. Okay. So he says it's false. Do you agree or disagree, yeah, young Greg? Well, uh, we would we would love to answer that question, but it's actually Tony's question. I'm sorry, Tony. I know. Hey, um, <laughs> if Shane if Shane puts you on the screen, I'm gonna fucking talk to you, Greg. That's how it works here. You okay. suck, Tony. A circle for being honest. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> He says he says false. Do you agree or disagree? Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. I I'm I'm gonna go ahead and agree with him. I'm gonna say that's false. Uh, it is false. It was a trick question, and Steve uh, caught on to it. He was inspired by Beauregard. I'm sorry, yeah, Beauregard it, Claghorn. However, Senator Claghorn was a fictitious character on Fred Allen's radio show, Allen's Alley. So you were correct, and you earned that uh, kiss. So now what do we got here, Shane? All right, so now, Greg, what do you, what do you say you play the game now? Okay? <laughs> Why not? I'm so who excited. Do you, who do you want to go with? Who do you want to go with? Um, I think I think we're going to go with Cameron. 
Cameron Crowe, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron Crowe. We all know Cameron. We know what he does. Let's find him a question. Here we go. Hey, Cameron, you wrote Yay. that show about uh, Jerry Maguire, right? You wrote that movie? I did. Okay. In Jerry Maguire, Cuba Gooding Jr. played a football player represented by Tom Cruise's character Cameron. What decade did the NFL require plastic helmets? <laughs> Okay. So when Jerry Maguire, Cuba Gooding Jr., played a football player, he was represented by Tom Cruise's character Cameron. What decade did the NFL require plastic helmets? I am, I am, it's a fascinating question. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, we wanted to find something in your real house. You know? I'm just wondering about Steve's edible. Like, how that's going <laughs> down there in the corner. Because I was really excited by everything that came from that edible. I think it's really great. I think we're going to um, invite Steve to that lunch with, with Monty. That's right. That's right. So, so I'm going to say that it was the 80s, Bill. I think it's the 80s, where the that, that sensibility... That You're sensitivity saying, started to rise. Okay, the NFL required plastic helmets in the 80s. Uh, we're going to disagree, disagree with that. Or agree? We're going to disagree with that, Bill. Disagree. It was the 1940s. The answer was 1949. So, uh, so you're, Good move, uh, you're correct. Good move, Greg. Good move. Good move. <laughs> great, Thanks. great bluff, Cam. Yeah, I, I dropped the confidence to that answer. I really. Oh, I oh it. yeah. I was writing movies about the 80s. What the hell? I figured yeah, what the hell. Yeah, it had to happen know? in the 80s. <laughs> That's a quick question, Bill. Did, did yeah, Cameron really sure, think Steve. that they were wearing... Did, did Cameron think that they were wearing leather helmets in the 80s or in the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. Well, Bill, Bill. You, you, basketball was my, my game, you know, which I think you can appreciate. But, um, yeah, I guess I got confused about the leather, uh, the leather heads. Yeah, apparently... apparently Cameron has a few edibles of his own out there, out there in, in the palace. Well, I just okay. love the George Clooney movie Leatherhead so much. Yeah. I just wanted to continue the magic. Okay. Hi, right, Tony. I think, I think this is the most competitive fucking game we've ever had in our lives here. Tony, who do you choose here? I'm going to choose the person who's looking down on Steve right now. I'm going to go with uh, little Dana Powers. Little Dana Powers. <laughs> Dana Powers. Dana. Here we go. Here we go, okay. Dana. Dana, you have a nickname, don't you? I do. You have a nickname. We call you Danersore. We call you Danersore here at the studio. Uh, since your nickname is Danersore, what is the nickname of the Tyrannosaurus Rex at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. Uh. There's, a, there's a very famous T-Rex in Chicago, Illinois at the Field Museum, and it has a nickname. What's the nickname of the T-Rex at the, at the Field Museum in Chicago? Well, um, I, I know a lot about dinosaurs. Do you? And <laughs> really? Sure. Do you really? And uh, I've been around you, a Chicago man, for the past yeah. eight years, and uh -huh. we cover many a topic. Okay. Um, so if I were to use my best judgment, I would just say T-Rex is big. Uh, so big, big Billy. Big Billy. <laughs> big Billy. Big Billy. Big Billy. Yes. That's your best shot at that. Big Billy. Yes. Big Billy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who's, whose question is this? Don't give me both of them, Shane, for God's sake. Okay, Tony, thanks. Tony, she says Big Billy. Do you agree or disagree? I could not disagree more. <laughs> she is incorrect. <laughs> Do you know it? You know it, Tony? No, I'm just trying to sound confident. <laughs> okay, it's Big Sue. It's Big Sue. Sue. Big Sue. I think it was named after the woman uh, who discovered it. So uh, there you go. That was All right, for you, so Tony. You don't get that, that was for you. You get that, and somebody gets that. And where are we at, Shane? Where are we at? We're over at Greg. Here we go, Greg. Who are you gonna go with? We're gonna we're gonna have to go with Tom, Bill. You have to. You have to. Tom 
Does that make you feel a little bad? He has to go with you. He <laughs> didn't want to go with you. He has to go with you. By the way, Bill, this is starting to feel like a hostage situation, this game. Is, <laughs> is it really? Yeah, I feel bad for some of these celebrities. I'm ready. I'm ready to bring this home. Okay. I know I know Steve is pissed off. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so wait a minute, Shane, is this for the win? Is this for the win? I forget who's the kiss. For the block. This is for the block. Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's a, oh, hey, you know, we'll go with this one, Tom. Here we go. You ready, Tom? You ready, yeah. Tom? Baby rabbits, Tom. Baby rabbits are called bunnies, okay? And the females are called does. What is the name given to male rabbits? Uh, uh, Hugh Hefner is the male. <laughs> the scientific. So it's called a Hugh. It's called a Hugh, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's, th this, this is an odd one yeah. because no one ever refers to the, oh, nice cat. Uh, <laughs> no one ever refers to a rabbit by this name, but it is a buck. A buck. All right. He says buck. I'm gonna what do you say, Greg? Do you agree or disagree? We're going to emphatically agree with you, Tom. That is correct. That is correct. So that uh, you, so you successfully blocked that oh. one. So uh, we we jump over to Tony. I'm telling you, the most competitive game we've ever had, and apparently is still streaming. <laughs> so this, is, this is all good. People are actually watching the damn game. We got Billy Aquaviva, Mike Travis. Look at all the people watching. De oh, my sister Debbie Holmes. She said Buck. She knows her animals. All right, so. Oh, there's our there's our live studio audience, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the, the live studio <laughs> studio audience. Wave at everybody. Wave, wave studio audience. There you go. They're getting up about 14 minutes delayed. <laughs> All right, who, who am I at here? I got confused. Who am I at? Who, who do we have? Okay, Tony. Who do you, who do you choose, Tony? Let's do this, Natasha. Let's Guys, I'm here. Is this for the win? This is for the win. This for the block. is for the win, Natasha. For the block. For the, the block. block. Oh, boys. this is for the block, Natasha. Oh, yeah. I yeah. really, I really shouldn't drink when I do the show. Natasha. Yes. According to how to get a man after you're 40. Oh Jesus. <laughs> can an older woman count on finding love and happiness? from a younger man? That's about the only person she can confidently rely on at that age. <laughs> um, well, yeah, honey, you know, the, just the whole apparatus just falls out of bed after a certain age. So, <laughs> yeah, so younger, yes, 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 so, yes, yes. So you're, you're going for younger, is that what you're telling me, Natasha? <laughs> that is the only option, sir. All right. She says an older woman can count on finding love. The Carcerum branded merchandise t-shirt is just one of many Carcerum branded merchandise items. The only official merchandise of Carcerum. Two t-shirts there. Okay, Tom, one. No, Natasha, who are we at? <laughs> Tony, is it Tony? Tony, there he is. There okay. we are. <laughs> Show, exactly. Okay, younger man, okay. she can fall in love with. Uh, I've totally forgotten what this is. Do you agree or disagree? She says, yes, you can find uh, from a younger man. I'm going to trust her. I'm going to say yes. The answer is yes. You are correct. Of course so it you is, achieve the block. Okay, there we go. Hey, Bill, point of order. Yeah. Yeah, what, sure. are the, what are the overtime rules? <laughs> <laughs> overtime rules is once we finish the show, it's over. <laughs> Over time. Over time. <laughs> Over time, it'll be done at some point. <laughs> yeah, Ayatsi's voting on that. There you go. Steve, if we um, go past 11, you get a driver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So wait, what's in uh, Natasha's cube there? That should be a, an X. That yes. should be a kiss. There we go. Yes. All right. So now what do we got? I got to look at this. Okay. All right. So let's go over to young... Uh, Young Greg and uh, Mom K, who the hell are we going with? This is the 
best show we've ever fucking done. I love this show. <laughs> Who do we go with, Greg? Hi, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Who'd you say, Greg? We're we're gonna go with Monty for the win. Yeah, Monty they... Python for the win. Oh. Mm. <laughs> All right, Monty. There you go. Okay. Monty, are you glad you stayed up? You living out there in Malibu? You stayed up late? Just for oh, yeah. All right, Monty. Yes. There you go. Dude, I'm so glad you stuck around because he actually picked you. Okay. Now, Monty, recently, most recently, you appeared on a show called I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, correct? You've been in that show? In which you played... A Johnny Carson impersonator, right? Uh -huh. What year did Johnny Carson take over The Tonight Show from Jack Parr? 1962. Oh, he knew that right away. He knew that right away. Look at that. This guy's sharp. Greg, what do you say? He says 1962. Do you agree with him? Or is he bluffing? Neither. Uh, we're, I'm going to trust you, Monty, and we're going to say agree. You should agree because it was October 1st, 1962. That is correct. Well done. So that well done. is the win, right? He wins. Oh, look at that. Greg wins. The, the boy genius, Monty. You made him seven five dollars. Oh, look at that. And you're there with your mom. Oh, okay. You must be proud of the boy. Oh, so Tony. Proud. Tony, so I'm proud. sorry. Tony, I'm so sorry. What, what do we have for Tony there, uh, Shane? What do we have for Tony? What do we have there? Shane, do we have something for Tony? I could visit. I was going to say, Natasha. Yeah. At least I... I feeling, Tony, you lost. Tony, I lost did you have a good a... opponent. I'm sorry. Did you have a good time, Tony? I did. This was uh, far much more fun than I could ever expect on a Friday evening with the Giants playing the Dodgers. So this was awesome. <laughs> We're not going to say the score because people might be watching, so don't say the score. Uh, so listen, uh, Greg, you win. What, what do you win there? Oh, my God, Greg, you won $5 and a Carcerum T-shirt that we're going to send your way. Make sure you tell us what size you need, okay? And uh, who won the... Uh, who won the coffee cup? Who won the coffee cup? Was that Tony? Oh, that was Greg. Greg. Oh, Greg, you can come by the studio and pick up your damn coffee cup, too. How about that? Oh, man. Greg, you are the big winner of the night. Hey, listen, <laughs> I want to thank all of our uh, our celebrity guests who came. Uh, think about it, guys. Oh, wait, go on me, Shane. Go on me for a second. Go on me for a second. Shane, get, come to me. Listen. We, we got... We got big time celebrities doing this goddamn nickel and dime show here. I mean, come on, guys. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank all the celebrities, uh, Kim and Natasha and and Tom and Dana, Maurice, uh, Mary, Steve Rudnick, his first time out, uh, Fred Applegate, and again, Monty Markham. Thanks for playing tonight. Uh, let's see. Uh, where do I? Bill, take us out of here. <laughs> Tonight's episode was unofficially sponsored by Fortaleza, the best goddamn tequila I've ever had. Just remember, folks, if the tequila tried to kill you, then I bet you didn't get you some of that sweet and tasty nectar that we know as Fortaleza. Would you like to appear on a future episode of North Hollywood Cubes? Simply send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address listed on your screen or send us a direct message at any of our previously listed social media accounts. This is Bill Holmes speaking for North Hollywood Cubes. Back to you, Bill. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, I know in the past couple of shows we had some problems. It seems like we fixed the problems tonight. Uh, I cannot thank my celebrity uh, panel enough for uh, taking the time to come and play with us tonight. Uh, hey, we'll see you next week. Oh, uh, no, no. We won't see you next week. We'll see you in two weeks. Well, we do another some kind of a game show. I don't know. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for playing. Bye. Bye.